everyone. Um, so this video is going to talk about factoring and specifically factoring with what's called the GCF method. So really this video is just going to cover these first three examples. But because this is your first exposure to factoring, before we start, um, I would like to talk for just a minute about what it means to factor. Okay. So you can write this down if you want to or just kind of follow along. You will have some questions to answer in just a minute. But um, let's talk about what it means to factor something. Okay. When, I, when I'm asking you to factor, what I'm asking you to do is take an expression and write it as a multiplication problem. Okay. Write it as a product. Product means multiplication problem. Okay. So my most basic example that I can think of is to take just a whole number. Let's take like 15, for example. We could factor that by breaking it into two pieces that multiply together to make 15. So for example, I could say 15 is equal to 3 times 5. Okay? That is the factored form of 15. And if you think about when we did factor trees earlier in the year, that's really what we were doing, right? As we were taking that number, splitting it into two things that multiply. Um, let's get a little more complex. What if I took 2x plus 6 and rewrote it as 2 times x plus 3? Well, if you think about that's a distributive property problem, which is really multiplication. And if I distributed that and multiplied that back together, it would turn back into 2x plus 6. So we have always focused on going in this direction. We have always started with something like this and then simplified it by multiplying and turning it into this. Okay. Now our goal is going to switch. We're going the other direction. We're going to go from 2x plus 6 down to 2 times x plus 3. Okay. So this is actually the type of factor I'm about to show you. But there's another one that's a little more complex, and that would be taking something like x squared plus 4x plus 3 and writing that as something times something, okay? Well, in that case, the something times something would look like this, x plus 1 times x plus 3. And don't worry, you don't have to know where that came from yet. That's coming later this week, okay? But if I took this and foiled it back together, which remember, foil is really a, a form of multiplication. Um, it's really a form of the distributive property. If I did this and this and this and this, I would end up with x squared plus 4x plus 3. So this is me writing this as a multiplication problem, and that's called factoring. Now, the reason this is so important is eventually we're going to learn that each of these factors individually gives us some very important information about the original function. Okay, And we're going to learn a little of that next week. Um, really, I think that hits a lot harder in Algebra 2. Okay. But just so you understand what our goal is, every type of factoring we learned this week, the goal is the same, to take something and write it as a multiplication problem, something times something, okay? Okay, so without further ado, let's head to, um, this is the first set of examples in your notes, and again, today we are just looking at this, factoring with GCF. Um, and before we dive into those, let's make sure we remember what GCF is. Um, GCF is greatest common factor and so we're looking for the largest that's what greatest means okay the largest number that divides into two or more numbers so for example if I had the numbers um, 12 and 20 okay I'm looking for the largest thing that divides into both of those okay well I hope that you could look at those two and say to yourself well I know the greatest common factor would be four the biggest thing that goes into both of them is 4. Okay, um, We're going to talk, and we'll talk kind of throughout here, about some things you could do if you didn't know that off the top of your head. If you don't know your multiplication tables real well, this is going to be tough for you. Okay, So it's the largest number that goes into two or more other numbers. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my face. Okay. So looking at this one, factoring with GCF is really like the reverse distributive property. You're going to hear me say that a lot. We are undoing the distributive property here. We are undistributing. So I'm going to start with my numbers here. I'm going to look at 16, 24, and 12. 
and I'm going to ask myself, what's the largest number that goes into all three of those? And I hope that the answer is screaming to you right now. But real quick, let me just show you what I would do if I didn't know the answer. Okay, and actually I'll do it up in this upper right corner. I would take the 16 and make a list of all the ways to multiply to 16. Start with 1. 1 times 16. And then go to 2. That would be 2 times 8. There is no 3. So there's 3 times nothing makes 16. But we have 4, and 4 times 4 would work. And since 4 is already on my list, then I don't have to keep going. Okay? Um, I could go through 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. And once I hit 8, there I am back on my list again. But this is my complete list, which means these are all factors of 16. Then let's do the same thing with 24. 1 and 24. 2 and 12. 3 and 8, 4 and 6, 5 doesn't work, and when I get to 6, 6 is already on my list, so I'm done. This, these are all my factors of 24, and then I could do the same thing with 12. 12, I could do 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And again, since my next number would be 4 and that's already on my list, I'm good. So what I'm looking for here, here's all the factors of 12, all the factors of 16, all the factors of 24. I'm looking for the biggest number that shows up on all three lists. And I hope that you're seeing that 4 is the biggest thing that I see on all three. Okay? There's some that show up on 2, right? Like 12 and 12, but I need a number that shows up on all three. Now, you're not going to have to do this with every single problem. Okay? Um, this was me just showing you, if you didn't know the answer off the top of your head, this is your survival strategy. Okay, so I'm going to start with 4. And then I want to look at my x's and my y's. So with x's, I have 4 here, 5 here, and 3 here. Think about what's the largest number of x's you could take away from all of them, okay? And that's kind of a counterintuitive question because the largest number you can take is always the smallest one, right? I can't take any more than three away from this one. So three is the max that I can take from all of them. So I'm going to take 4x cubed. And then for my y's, I've got 2 and 8 and 5. So the most I can take is 2. Now you probably are wondering, why do I keep saying take, okay? Because this is going to be the thing sitting outside the parentheses like the distributive property. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this out of each one of these. And when I say take out, I mean divide. Okay, I'm going to divide this by this to figure out what would be left on the inside. Okay, The question I'm really asking myself is 4 times what would give me back that 16? Well, that would be a 4. And then I took three X's, and there were four here. And I, I keep saying take away because remember that when you're dividing with exponents, you really subtract the exponents. So if I do X to the fourth divided by X cubed, I get X to the first. And then if I take two Y's away, this one only had two Y's, so I don't have any Y's to put on that first term. Now I keep going. Minus. Now I'm going to take a 4 out of the 24, or in other words, 4 times what makes 24? That would be 6. I'm going to take 3x's from 5, so I'm going to have x squared. And I'm going to take 2y's from 8, so I'm going to have y to the 6. Plus, and then 4 from 12. Again, I'm not subtracting here. I'm asking myself 4 times what makes 12? That would be 3. I took 3x's out. Okay, so there's not going to be any x's left there. And I took two y's out, so I'm going to have y to the third. And this thing right here is your answer. Okay, and I know that looks kind of weird, but that's the goal of factoring. And if you redistributed, if you took this thing and multiplied it back through here, it would turn back into this original example. Okay, so that's kind of the goal of factoring with GCF. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's think about what's the greatest common factor of 24 and 12. What's the biggest thing that goes into both? I hope you're saying 12. Okay. If you look at just, so now I'm looking at just these two, 12 and 24, no 16. 
and the largest thing on both lists is the 12. Okay? How many A's can I take away? I can take away two. And how many B's can I take away? I can take away three. Okay, so now what's left out of this first term after I take this out? Well, 12 times what makes 24? That would be two. I took out two A's, so I would have two left over because A squared times A squared would give me back A to the fourth. And then I took out three B's, which means I have three left over, okay? Because B to the third times B to the third gives me B to the sixth. Now, watch what's gonna happen with this next one. I'm gonna take out the 12, okay? I'm gonna take out two A's and I'm gonna take out three B's. So essentially, this whole term disappears. I'm taking out the entire thing, okay? And this is a place where some people get confused because they think that if I took out this whole term, it should just be gone. But remember, you need to be able to multiply this back out and have it turn back into this. So you need something over here to multiply by that's going to turn back into that term. So anytime you take out everything, it's just going to be a 1 standing in its place. Because now if I redistribute, if I do this, times this, it's going to give me back the 24 a to the fourth b to the sixth. And I can do this times one and it'll give me back that term. Okay. So there's my factored answer for number two. And number three, 6x squared plus 3x minus 12. This one's a lot simpler, I think. Um, so 6, 3, and 12, biggest thing that goes into all three of them would be three, because the only thing that goes into three is three my only alternative. And then in terms of the x's, I really can't take any because do you see that 12 doesn't have any for me to take? So I can't take out any x's. The only thing I can do is take out a 3. And so really what I'm doing is dividing all of these by 3. This would become 2x squared. This next one would become a 1x or just an x. And then negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. Okay, and that's it. I factored because I've written this as a multiplication problem. And if I distributed this 3 back through, it would turn back into my original. That's always your goal, is to make it so that if you distribute back, it turns back into the original. Okay, that was really it for today. It's just those three examples, but that's going to take some practice for you to get really used to it. So um, homework for tonight, you do have an assignment that says factoring monomials from polynomials. And then also another page that says factoring basic, I'm sorry, just basic polynomial operations. So just real quick. You have this page, okay, factoring monomials from polynomials. I did say that you can get away with doing just odds on that, okay. If you feel like you need more practice, you're welcome to do the evens. I'll tell you what, I'll even make that extra credit, okay. Evens extra credit, but you only get the extra credit if you have the whole assignment done, okay? Um, and then you also have this assignment, basic polynomial operations. Again, I said odds only, that's front and back odds only. I'll give extra credit for evens on that too. Okay, so if you do the whole two pages, um, you'll get one assignment grade plus an extra 10 for these odds and an extra 10 for these odds. I'm sorry, evens, extra 10 for the evens. Okay, that's it from me today. Sorry for the babble there at the end. Um, good luck, and I will see you in class tomorrow.